Hey guys, it's Mrs. Forns here, and I hope that each of you are well. I want to welcome you to our, our new classroom. I'm calling this Mrs. Forns Fusion. It is online speech and language therapy. I decided to call it Mrs. Forns Fusion because it is a blend of learning at home and learning like we did at school. Um, I really hope that you appreciate the effort and the product that I've produced here. I've got um, my own avatar, if you will, with my laptop and my books and folders, um, my cup of coffee, which is a staple and I definitely have to have, and some other things that have been um, super important as we have been working remotely for the last couple of weeks as teachers. I've got my clock. Um, I have a comment bar, um, another laptop, uh, obviously my Trojan headdress, I wear it everywhere. Um, I'm going to come back to this piece in just a minute. Got a, a speech bubble right there because I do speech and language therapy. And then also the icon that is on our Fountain Middle School homepage. So going right back up here to this little um, newspaper, I've got a picture here that says keep calm and be a good digital citizen. It's going to be super important. And we're going to dive in and talk about being a digital digital citizen, what that means, what it means to be a good one as opposed to a bad one. All right, before we get into that, I want to talk about some good things, um, potentially some sad things, and then some funny things. First thing, I can't believe it has been three weeks since we were together at school. The last time we were together, it was Friday, March 13th. And sometime later that day, I saw this meme and it really stuck out to me. I felt like this could have been me. So I decided to go ahead and copy and paste a picture of myself um, onto this lady's head. Um, I felt very puzzled that day. I was thinking coronavirus pandemic, Daylight savings time, Friday the 13th, a full moon, this potential toilet paper shortage, and all of this stuff had happened in the same week. Um, this lady asked the question, who's playing Jumanji? And I thought, uh, that's a great question. I would like to know the same thing. thought you guys would appreciate this. This is actual footage of me for the last three weeks. Not really. This is actual footage of me from the last three weeks. I missed you guys so much. SpongeBob and I were so sad. This is also actual footage of me from the last few weeks. I started keeping an online picture calendar diary, if you will, and it looks something like this. I was doing this because I was having feelings of anxiety. I was confused and a little bit frustrated. So I have our typical school days. And then I have my my meme here that I really identified with. And then things started getting canceled and those were having some negative impacts on my own children. So like March Madness was canceled and my son was extremely upset. Um, we spent a lot of time on FaceTime that next weekend with family members across the country. Um, we started doing a 550 piece puzzle, which we have not done that in a very long time and we completed that. Um, I started feeling sad that we weren't going back to school and St. Patrick's Day celebrations across the country and across the world were being canceled. Um, definitely having some anxious thoughts about uh, making sure things were sanitized and clean, um, doing lots of crafts, and then FaceTiming again. And then over here, I've got baby Yoda with a, a really dry hand because I've been washing my hands so much that it felt like the skin was just going to fall off. So I'm sure that some of you guys had some similar thoughts and feelings, um, potential feelings of being scared and sad. Um, some of you might have dealt with all of the uncertainty um, with quite a bit of comfort. It might not have been too difficult for you to socially distance yourself. But anyhow, we all deal with things a little bit differently. 
All right. As we get back into our learning um, at home environment, I think it's important that we revisit our social contract. So we always have a social contract while we are at school, and it usually outlines expected behavior that we're going to have while we are in class or we are doing speech and language therapy. And typically what I have on our social contract is that we have a quiet mouth, which means that we take turns speaking, that we keep hands in our lap or keep our hands to ourselves, that we always have looking eyes, which means that we're paying attention to the teacher, that we have listening ears, which means that we are actively listening in class, that we have a calm body and that we're staying in our own space and we're using kind words, which means using respectful language. So this is our social contract that we have when we are learning at school. And so as we move into this new situation where we are going to be learning at home, I think we need to develop a new social contract. And I would like to do that together because we are a community of learners. And so I want you to think about that. And then each student will respond in a discussion board post. It will be separate from this presentation. And I want you to add what you think is important for us to have in our learning at home social contract so that people can feel safe and that we can be productive and make progress. All right, guys, so let's get to learning. My friend right here is super excited. My friend down here is super excited as well. So keep calm and be a good digital citizen. That's what I wanna talk about right now. Being a good digital citizen. What does that even mean? So I want you to think about the words digital citizen, and I want to read through the learning targets. I can define the term digital citizen. I can discuss the elements of digital citizenship. I can compare different types of citizens, digital citizens, but I can also compare family citizens, classroom citizens, community citizens, and global citizens. I also want us to think about these big essential questions. So what is the place of media and tech and technology in our lives? And how do good digital citizens show responsibility to others? So when we are talking with our friends online, or if we are talking with our teachers online, how are we showing that we are good digital citizens? So let's chat about being a good digital citizen. My friend over here, he says, what? My friend down here says, what did you say? Those are great questions. What is a digital citizen? What does digital mean? What is a citizen? Let me take you through this. There are eight different elements or parts of digital citizenship, okay? So we have internet safety, privacy and security, relationship and communication, cyberbullying and digital drama, digital footprint and reputation, self-image and identity, information literacy and creative credit and copyright. That's a lot of information, guys. All right, do you understand the meaning of digital citizen now? No, those are some tough words. Yeah, guys, you're right. Those are tough words. So what is the definition of a good digital citizen? A good digital citizen is a person that is safe and kind and follows the rules when using technology. I've got some pictures here to illustrate that. A digital citizen is a person that is safe and kind and follows the rules when they're using technology. That's a good digital citizen. What other types of citizens are there? So remember, a citizen is a person that is safe and kind and follows the rules where they live, work, and play. So a person can be a family citizen. You can be a family citizen. You can be a good family citizen. A person can be a classroom citizen. 
you can be a good classroom citizen. A person can be a community citizen. A community is a town or a city where there is a restaurant or a post office, a school, a movie theater, a police station, and a fire department. That's a community. You can be a good community citizen. And over here we have global citizen. Global is another word for worldwide, globe, or the earth. There are people all over the earth. So you can be a good global worldwide citizen. Let's watch this video and let's see if this helps at all. We're all citizens of our communities, our states, countries, even the world. Today we are even citizens of a bigger community. It's online and its members include anyone who uses a connected device, like a computer, smartphone, iPad, or tablet. Hey, that makes almost everyone a digital citizen. Digital citizenship offers great opportunities. Just think of all the cool stuff you can do online. But it also requires big responsibilities. To be kind, fair, respectful, and truthful, for example. But who's online to make sure that we use the internet properly? Well, that's the thing. Sometimes there are no internet police or traffic signals to tell people how to act online. So it's up to us to act responsibly. After all, no one wants to hang out in a place that's not safe or fun to be in, right? So think about that next time you go online. Because how you act today will largely determine what digital citizenship will be tomorrow. No one wants to hang out in a place that's not safe or fun to be in, right? All right, guys, let's look at that right there. That was a great video, but this piece right here in the speech bubble really sticks out to me. No one wants to hang out in a place that's not safe or fun to be in. So where are they talking about? They're talking about being on the internet. It is a big, huge place. And just like we want you guys to be safe when you are at school, when you are in class, when you are participating in sports after school, when you are at home, we want you guys to be safe and have fun when you're on the internet. So that kind of helps me think about what being a good digital citizen might mean. Let's look at this. So over here in this column, I have some words, all right? In the middle column, I have the meanings of these words also called the definitions. Over here, I've got some pictures of what the meanings and the definitions would look like if we were to draw a picture, all right? So our first word, we have digital. Digital means electronics. It also means technology, all right? So we have a big definition here. So we have digital technology to send and receive communication through electrical signal signals, a digital camera, a digital clock, digital readout. Um, and then over here, our picture would look something like this. Let's look at this word, electronics. The branch of physics that deals with the emission and effects of electrons and with the use of electronic devices. And so here's a picture. Got some gears and some lightning bolts. Down here, the word is technology, all right? I'm going to read just this first definition. Knowledge that is used practically to create new things such as machines. Some companies use better technology than others. Here's some other pictures of technology. We have gears, a mouse, an older computer, and cell phone and television and again, the gears. Okay, so I'm thinking digital, all right? Digital means electronic. Digital means technology. Digital, okay. I'm gonna go to this next slide. 
On this slide, in our left-hand column, I have the word citizenship, and I also have the word citizen. So let's quickly look through these meanings or definition. So the meaning of citizenship is the status of a citizen with rights and duties. Hmm. Conduct as a citizen, award for good citizenship. I bet many of you received awards, awards for being good citizens when you were in elementary school. Let's look over here in our far right-hand column for a picture symbol definition. Okay, I see a person and it looks like they have received an award. I see a person. I see a group of people. Okay, so I think a person that is um, taking care of their rights and their duties, taking care of others, okay. Down here, I just have the word citizen. So a citizen is a person who was born in a country or who has been legally allowed to live in or join a country. A person could be a British citizen. A citizen is a native or naturalized member of a state or other political community. And here is a picture symbol of a person that is a member of a community. So let's look at this next video. This might help us understand the meaning of the term digital citizen. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's... Wait, who in the world are you? I'm Super Digital Citizen. Ta-da! Super Digital Citizen? Are you from another planet? Nope. Can you fly? Apparently not. And why do we need you, Mr. Superhero? Think about it. Every day, kids post, share, play, create, explore, and learn all online. The digital world can be a sinister place. So I make sure that kids are safe, responsible, and respectful. Huh, I guess we do need superheroes like you. Yep, I'm all about helping us kids make good choices. That sounds like one tough day job. says we can all be superheroes each and every day. What are your what are superpowers? Okay guys, real quick I want to look back in that video. Right here, our narrator in the video said the digital world, the internet world, that technological world can be sinister. Sinister is another word that means the same thing as bad. And the internet world can be bad. That's why it's so important that you are a good digital citizen and that you are good role models for others to be good digital citizens. Let's review our big essential questions. Our first essential question was, what is the place of digital media and technology in our lives. And that's simply that digital media, media and technology helps us to connect, create, and to learn. We connect with one another over social media and email, and we create art, and we learn every single day. So that lets us know that digital media and technology is super important in our lives. 
our second big essential question was, how do good digital citizens show responsibility to others? And we do that simply by being kind and helping one another. Let's review real quick. What is the definition of a citizen? A citizen is a person that is kind and safe and follows the rules wherever they live, work, and play. Let's review the types of citizens. We know we have a digital citizen, but we also have a family citizen, a classroom citizen, a community citizen, and a global or a worldwide citizen. That does it for this episode of Mrs. Forn's Fusion Online Speech and Language Therapy. Remember, keep calm and be a good digital citizen and always think before you post anything on the internet. Have a great day, guys.